welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into Charlotte Tilbury's color coded eyeshadow palettes. I have all four of them. I've already put on my face, so the details of all that will be listed in the description box below. All right. So the whole premise behind these four eyeshadow palettes is that they are flattering for a particular eye color. So the blue is for brown eyes, I think. Oh geez. Now I gotta go back and look. Ugh. Oh my gosh, where did it go? Yeah, so the blue one is for brown eyes to make them pop and copper is for blue eyes. So this is supposedly flattering for me. The green is for hazel. This one is for green eyes. I'm gonna give all four of them a whirl. Starting with the eye color that's universally flattering for moi, which is the copper. I'm just gonna jump right in. Woo, I am. Not loving, not loving the pandemic. <laughs> it's just not for me. The first thing I'm going to do is prime my eyes with MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. How's everyone else doing? It's strange because not much of my life has really changed because I already work from home, but there's just this overwhelming sense of dread and I feel like I say this every time, but it hasn't changed. My fears continue to happen, so. Gonna roll with it, I guess. All right, I think my eyes are sufficiently covered. So now we gotta make the fun decisions about how we're gonna use this quad. Well, I think I'm gonna go in with sort of burnt umber looking color. One thing you can say about Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows is that they're typically quite pigmented. So I'm a little hesitant to go in here ever so lightly. <laughs> I mean, I'm already like, that's beautiful. Oh, am I easy to please? Is that, is that what I'm quickly learning about myself? I don't know what it is, but I always find that this eye blends better than this one. And I don't know if it's like the skin texture or the fact that I'm like at a different angle, but anyone else experience this? Where one eye is more cooperative than the other? I have been trying to keep myself busy lately by working. But on top of that, I have begun to watch the old Star Trek series from the 60s. And let me tell you, it is, I mean, if you like the 60s and campy type TV, this is perfect, it's perfect. Some of the storylines are pretty ridiculous, but overall, I'm digging it. Some episodes are better than others, but yeah. 10 out of 10 so far, it's on Crave. We're gonna see if we can make it through the whole Star Wars series. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go in with this coppery color next. So let's try that out. And then other than that, I've been watching a lot of YouTube, but not your typical YouTube. I've really fallen down an old Hollywood hole. So watching Christie's auctions of different actors, old collections of stuff like Elizabeth Taylor and Marilyn Monroe and that kind of thing. I think probably because there's a new season of You Must Remember This podcast coming out soon and it just always reignites my love of classic Hollywood stuff. Oh, also another not necessarily Hollywood but definitely significant pop culture reference of the 60s as well. I've been watching stuff about Lee Radzowell, which she is Jackie Kennedy Onet. Oh my god, what a Got eyeshadow on my cheek. Jackie Kennedy Onassis's sister. Uh, and if you watch Real Housewives of New York, former cast member Car Carol Radswell's mother-in-law. But anyway, so Lee Radswell, Jackie's sister, uh, I've been watching interviews with her because she was pretty groovy back in the day, hanging out with Andy Warhol and the Rolling Stones and yada, yada, yada. But then it reminded me of, they had a cousins that lived in, oh my gosh, the Hamptons? maybe East Hampton, I'm not sure. They became like shut-ins and turned this giant mansion into a cat house. It wasn't until a couple of documentarians stumbled upon the house that started making a documentary about this and it was found out that they were the cousins of Jackie Kennedy and Lee Radzowell. Anyway, there is a movie called Great Gardens about them. It's spectacular, it's so good. But that movie is actually based off of this documentary that was actually made, I think in the 60s as well, maybe 60s, late 70s. 
and it is absolutely fascinating. Like, if you are looking for something to watch right now, I would suggest starting with the documentary and then moving on to the movie. Anyway, I kind of feel like I want to rewatch that. I have digressed and I'm not putting on makeup. Next up, I'm gonna go in with this lighter top shade here, just with my finger. Ooh, feels very creamy. Oh la la. And then with a little brush here to Get in that crevasse. Well, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous, darling. Are my eyes popping? Ooh, cukey. I'm gonna go in with this copper underneath a little bit to tie in the look. Because I've been watching all these random historical things, I've really been putting the YouTube algorithm to test because the things I click on are all over the map and I'm sure they're just having a real good time trying to pin down what I might want to watch. Mmm, there's also eyeliners. So I was sent the four palettes and then only three eyeliners, but I think one of them might have gotten lost. The box had a hole in it when it arrived. So I think uh, RIP to those liners. Like, that's so nice. So we gotta get one of these whirl, obviously. There is a little bit of fallout, but nothing too crazy. All right, let's try the copper end on the bottom. That I like. Oh, I could just see wearing this eyeliner and no eyeshadow. I do like this eyeliner quite a bit. The eyeshadows are very soft and blendable, very easy. I like this palette. I could definitely see using it. I mean, obviously gonna try it a few more times, but so far so good. I'm going to pop on some mascara though and a little bit of lipstick too. Mascara. I'm starting a new mascara. So I recently have discovered, not that was any surprise to me, that I really don't have a lot of eyelashes, nor do I have a lot of eyebrow either. It's just sort of a curse. Got a lot of lip, but little, little hair where I want it. And I heard someone describe lashes that point down, even after you've curled them, as horse lashes. I would definitely say that that describes my lashes quite well, aside from the fact that horses have so much lash that they just point down. All right, that is look number one. Now let's try out super blue. This will be interesting. Wonder if it's gonna stain my eyes. Guess you'll see. Okay, I'm gonna take this off and start again. Okay, I have incredibly sensitive eyes and I'm gonna try and get through all four of these palettes, but I might have to split it up between two days. Also, I don't think that mascara agreed with me. Okay. Let's try another color. Feels like there's ma like crusted mascara stuck in this eye. Okay, show must go on. I'm gonna go in with the matte blue first and see what happens. I'm nervous, this is gonna be crazy. I also put the MAC Painter, Painterly Paint Pop back on. Oh, it's making my eyes feel really tacky, which I don't know if I'm loving, but I guess it serves a purpose. Yeah, this blue is not over. I'm really, it's really making me work. Oh, that might've been a false move. I'm gonna go in now with that uh, brown <sighs> color, because I think I like it better. Experiencing more fallout. Oh my God, did I just do that? <laughs> Can't take me anywhere, you guys. I don't know if I'm experiencing more fallout or it's just that I can actually see it because these are, this palette is much darker than the other one. Mmm! You know what we should do before I get too carried away here is go in with the, ooh la la, the eyeliner this time. This changes everything. Scratch this. This eyeliner is the, is the real, real showstopper. Should I, mm, okay. Let's try it first and then see what happens. Oh my gosh. Yeah, forget the eyeshadow. <laughs> this has got to be about this eyeliner, wow. I'm obsessed with this eyeliner. <sighs> wow, I'm gonna go with the lightest color and then lighten up the corner here. Yellowy color is not picking up the way I want it to and I really wanna use this blue but I just don't think it's gonna go on my eye the way that it looks here. Maybe I need to wet my brush. All right, fix plus it up. Mm-hmm, there we go. 
want it to be as metallic as that eyeliner. I know this looks a little crazy and it might just end up being totally unusable, but laying around here, because what else am I gonna do with my time? It's really difficult when both of your eyes are just slightly different. Okay, whatever, we'll go with that. Now I'm gonna go back in with this sparkly blue and fill this bad boy in. I love it. If you've ever watched any John Waters movies, like original Hairspray movie with Ricky Lake and Debbie Harry in it, and Divine, one of John Waters' favorite actors to use. I feel like this is really of that vibe. Also very punk. <laughs> I think I would like it to try and brighten up the corner with the white color though. I think I need something along the bottom now though to really tie the look together. The brush kind of has this murky blueness to it now, which I'm into. What if we went in with the eyeliner on the bottom? Okie dokie. I think I need more of an intense lip, but let's just try a little gloss here. Probably use some mascara. I'm gonna try a different one because that other one was not agreeing with me. This is the look. This could probably use some eyelashes. Now I'm gonna go in with NARS Climax Mascara. Ow. Oh no, 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 no. Gotta suck up those tears before they come out. Dab my eye with the wand. I think I'm going to put on some half seat. I have some Urban Decay Fast, Easy, Sexy, Partial False Lashes. I don't think they sell them anymore, so sorry. But that's just what we're gonna do today. Spare me some of the issues of putting on some lashes. Also having a bit of the same effect. All right, there you have it. That is pretty, pretty wild. Okie dokie. Second look done. Let's move on to the third. All right, I'm back and I am looking haggard. My eyes, not happy. Oh, should I even fucking do this today? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna try the green. So this is when things started to go downhill. I was tired, I forgot my painterly paint pot on my eyes, so the shadow wasn't really going on as nice as it should have. And then I just slowly kept getting eyeshadow on my cheeks. And then I tried to do some eyeliner and that whole age old joke about it getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you just try and make it work and then it just doesn't. Yeah, that happened to me. But in the course of that, I also got more eyeshadow on my cheeks. Oop, tried to smudge stuff and then, you know, it just, things just fell apart. <sighs> oh, I've got eyeshadow all over my face. I quit, I quit. Well guys, I've discovered what my limit is, and if this is any indication, <sighs> woo, okay, <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> okay, thank you, thanks, yeah. It's a new day. My eyes are not bloodshot now. <laughs> After two eye looks, my eyes were just so irritated and that is nothing to do with the eyeshadows. I just have extremely sensitive skin and I was pulling and tugging a little bit too much, taking off the makeup without taking off my face makeup. So I'm gonna do the last two palettes today. But first, should I put on my earrings again? No. You know what? I don't have to suffer too much today. Got a cat sleeping over there that's so damn cute. Oh, I wish you could see what I'm seeing. Okay, I'm gonna just take a little video with my phone so you can see Chloe just chilling. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so cute. She's just a little fuck croissant. Okay, anyway, I <laughs> love my cat. So I'm going in with the matte color first and the mesmerizing Merrien. I was looking at my photos from yesterday and I really liked the blue look I did. It was a lot, but something about it just reminded me of my punk days. Right now I'm rereading a textbook from when I was in university and I went to school for fashion communications and it's just getting me really jazzed about the history of fashion again. I've been listening to this new podcast. It's not new, it's in its second season, but it's called Articles of Interest and it's about style. 
I'm a history of fashion and let me tell you, I love that. And another thing that I've been recently indulging in is when I lived in England, 10 years ago, nine years ago. There's a store off of Oxford Circus and off of Regent Street. It's Carnaby Street anyway. In I think it was 1875, Liberty of London opened and they were this crazy department store that specialized in exotic goods. Anyway, they still exist now. They're really well known for patterns, kind of like William Morris crazy pattern prints. And they make scarves and stationery, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. While I was living in England, they, I'm gonna, sorry, <laughs> pause story. I'm going to deepen up this little corner here with this sparkly shade right here. Anyway, as I was saying, what was I saying? Oh, that's a beautiful color, wow. While I was living in England, they came out with a documentary series about them getting ready for their Christmas haul. Liberty is known for their Christmas decorations and their Christmas windows. Uh, if I can find some of the photos I took when I was living there, their Christmas windows were absolutely bonkers. They're so well known for Christmas decor and they even devote a whole floor to their Christmas shop every season. And I think it opens in September and they essentially spend the whole year preparing for this Christmas shop. But this is a reality documentary series that shows how they prepare to open up this Christmas floor. There's only two seasons of it. It was made by Channel 4, which is a British TV station. You can actually stream stuff from Channel 4 in Canada. I don't know about the US though, but it's phenomenal. They have so much good stuff on there. Highly recommend if you're looking for British TV. In fact, I think you might actually be able to watch Peep Show on there too. I'm not sure though. Great British humor. Anyway, the documentary about Liberty of London is not on channel 4 anymore for some reason so I have just been watching it on YouTube and the, the worst lowest grade stream of it it's like 240 oh it's so bad but you know what I'm devoted to revisiting that time in my life so I have just been putting up with it <laughs> dare I say this might be <laughs> my favorite of the four I did not see that coming this is stunning and this light color is so creamy and it just glides right on, wow. Yeah, I just really love British stuff. I just also really miss living there. When I was in England, it was like a really not a great time for myself, mostly because I had just graduated from university in a <laughs> financial crisis, fun and had broken up with my long-term boyfriend at the time. I just, I don't know, I just felt really lost and decided to move to England because I really enjoyed living there when I was doing a year abroad. And I had friends there that were living at the time and I was like, this will be fun. And it just turned out that I moved there to live out a crazy depression. <laughs> It was good. I mean, I think it was just a nice time for me to ground myself and be away from my ex-boyfriend, blah, all this other stuff. Really just experience a different country. This is my London fog. <laughs> I'm really on brand today and it's in a Yellowstone mug. So I'm like super on brand since that was my last video. I feel fairly good about this. There's just something about this eye that just doesn't like blending as well as this one does. And I just don't know what to do about it. So that's neither here nor there. It is just what it is. It is what it is. Take this up a notch. Oh my God, my cat is snoring and it's so cute. Does anyone else's pet snore? I'm going to put on mascara now. I'm gonna do NARS Climax again because I wasn't really super stoked on the L'Oreal Voluminous Original. That might be because this is old and I just opened it now. I have no idea when this was from. Honest to goodness, I have been feeling so insecure about my eyelashes because they are so tiny and non-existent and not great. And then I put on this mascara and I'm like, oh no, they're there. They're not bad at all. They're not great, but they're there. And I'm pretty sure I was just using mascara that was not, not doing it for me. But I really do like the NARS Climax. Well, that's mesmerizing maroon. I liked the lightest shade in this one the best out of the three palettes that I've tried so far. I don't even want to take off this makeup. This is gonna be so sad. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> I'll be back in a second to start over again. And we're back. I am going to 
do the last palette, which is the green one. I just had a brief interlude where I was filming a bunch of TikToks. There are no matte colors in here, but we'll make it work. And when I say a bunch of TikToks, it really means I just filmed one and it took forever because it was 10,000 costume changes. I did the cartoon character challenge. This little magic color here. That is a really beautiful base color. Ooh, let's hit up some of that eyeliner. Try the metallic side. Oh, my cat's crying. Yeah, it wouldn't be a sandy makeup tutorial if I didn't have zhuzh on my face. Hmm. I'm gonna use the green matte color underneath. Digging that. So I'm going in with the top gold shade here. I'm just pressing that on ever so gently. Hmm, I think it needs a little more oomph. Really packed it onto that brush. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this metallic green shade here. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I'm gonna buff this out a bit. All right, Let's see if I can really get it on there. Well, it's working much better. Mascara time. I think I wanna make this a little bit more vampy. Okay, I think this actually calls for some eyelashes. Never understood how people are like, oh yeah, I just put my eyelashes underneath my set of lashes. How? How does one do that wizardry? Because I don't understand it. I tried doing it and I felt like I just glued my eyeball shut. I really want to try magnetic lashes though. Would you look at that? All right, well they're on. No doubt about that. Yeah, oh, I should show you my little baby. My baby cutie wooty. Overall, I think the green palette is really beautiful, but in terms of performance and color story that I ended up really liking, this turned out to be my favorite, which is the Mesmerizing Maroon. I did not see that coming. The way that the color performed and looked on me, but also the different formula of eyeshadows. I love this matte, it blended so easily. This was my favorite. I thought for sure the blue one and the green one were gonna be my favorites. Actually, the copper is really nice too. Not necessarily the most unique color stories, but you can can definitely get a full look out of every single one of these palettes it's not like you're buying a quad of toppers or anything so but I think the real hero to me are the liners they are gorgeous I loved all three of them such stunning colors the metallics especially I think were the real standouts to me so overall, I would say that the eyeliners are my favorite part and then the mesmerizing maroon. We'll probably be throwing that into regular rotation. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Toodles.